Hi everyone, this is Sherry Bell Raywald, and before we get started with today's Step Up episode, I want to thank our very cool sponsor, Event Espresso. Event Espresso is an event registration and management plugin for WordPress. It will turn your WordPress site into an effective event management tool. So check out Event Espresso at eventespresso.com. Look at the demo, check out the features between the free and premium version, and see which one is right for you. Event Espresso, our wonderful sponsor, thank you so much. And let's get to this episode of Step Up. Hi everyone, this is Sherry Bell Raywalt, and thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Step Up, the online video program in which I interview smart people making smart business moves so that we can learn their tips and tools to make our businesses smart and move forward as well. Today I am interviewing Pete Cadella and this is Pete and this is his blog PeteCadella.com. I just want you to notice his links. You can find Pete in lots of places but definitely at CadellaMarketing.com, his website. News Cactus. We'll be talking about News Cactus in our interview shortly and you can also find Pete on his weekly online PR podcast in which he talks about all things PR. So from here, http forward slash PeteCadella.com, you can find all about Pete and all the various places that he's available online. So let's get to our step up interview with Pete and we are discussing the importance of online newsrooms. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me on this episode of Step Up. Today my guest is a, well, I like to call him the social media guru, but he's actually, I think he calls himself a PR practitioner, but the guy knows everything about social media, and he also knows a lot about online newsrooms. So my guest today is Pete Cadella from Cadella Marketing, and Pete is going to tell us the ins and outs of why we need an online newsroom. So Pete, not to put you on the spot here, but what makes you an expert in online newsrooms? Why should we listen to you? Well, good good question. And by the way, I don't like the term guru because I really don't think anyone's a guru. Um, but certainly we have expertise from our experience. I would say online newsrooms are the result of public relations coming into the digital age, basically. I've practiced uh, PR for about 16 years or so now. And for the past half dozen years or so, I really focused on the internet and how public relations messaging can reach audiences using the internet. At first it started with um, websites, you know, developing websites for, for firms, usually professional service organizations, and then that led to discussion groups and listservs, and then social media came along, and so I've really focused on how we can use the technology, these digital tools, to share public relations messages on the internet. And that's what led me to an online newsroom, and in 2006 I created a software for online newsrooms called News Cactus, and it's one of about half a dozen or so different um, software-as-a-service um, solutions that are out there, and News Cactus helps companies, helps PR people, marketing people, advertising people get their message out there right away. It's just like blogging. It's like using WordPress to drive a blog. News Cactus helps drive an online newsroom. So I think that experience, developing that, working with um, reporters, finding out what they want to see in an online newsroom, and then just my background and, and experience speaking with PR people just kind of helps me understand the tools they need to, to share their messages on, online. Okay. Um, I do want you to address um, briefly the difference between the old paper press release and the new social media release, but before we get into that, Tell okay. us what an online newsroom really is, and, and if there are hard and fast rules with that, let us know, or if it you know, can be anything that we want to customize it, let us know that as well. So basically I view an online newsroom as a microsite. Okay? Um, the, the days of publishing a, a website and having it be kind of an online brochure for your organization, those days are gone. That's, that's kind of a static site that used to sit there for years and years and people would come updated every few years. Now, with social media, the advent of all these real-time tools, it's important for communicators to have a vehicle to share real-time messages. So an, an online newsroom is a microsite. It's a website d dedicated to sharing an organization's news releases. Um, I don't like to use the term press release because I think it's old school. It, that announcement's not just going to the press. It's going to everyone. You know, the Internet makes it so that any key audience 
anyone who's online can find your information. So the online newsroom itself becomes a vehicle through which you share and, and publish your own, basically you're self-publishing your own news and announcements. Now the goal is, going back to media relations and, and PR, is that you get journalists who are interested in what you do, what you have to say, who will then follow you in your online newsroom, who will subscribe to your feed, who will interact with you um, and, and receive those, those news releases either in an RSS reader or in their email inbox. So that's the tool that you want to use for your online newsroom. But again, that's a journalist audience, but with the internet, we're open to so many different key audiences because, because anyone who has access can, can view your press release. So what are some of the components then that are on your uh, personal newsroom? Like what, because I, I just want to tell the, audience, the viewers that you're a small business, so in your mind, are there differences between what a large business would have, you know, like Sony versus you or myself? Sure. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's true. Based on your organization, how large you are, you know, how much of a media presence you have, there, there's going to be different things. But I think the main, um, the, the fundamental elements that an online newsroom has are are news releases and available in a searchable format. That's one of the biggest things that the journalists say is I've got to be able to search and find information I'm looking for. Um, also, perhaps archived by year or archived by category. See, now the category part gets into kind of a larger company. For me, um, it's just by year, an archive. So those press releases, media contact information is one of the top things that journalists are looking for in a newsroom. You know, just tell me, who do I talk to? Give me a real person, give me a phone number, give me social media connections to that person so that I can get a quote or whatever I need um, for my article that I'm writing. And by the way, um, we're talking a 24-hour news cycle, right? It's not just 9 to 5. So the newsroom really is a great tool to help PR people share this information online all the time, all year. So it, hopefully it's providing that, those tools that journalists can, can use even late at night when they're on a deadline trying to get an article done. So you've got press releases, you've got media contact information. You also have a section called In the News. So hmm. basically any, any media who's written about you, you want to share that in your online newsroom. It can be video, it can be you know, audio from radio or podcasts, it can be PDFs of, of newspaper articles or magazine articles, whatever. So you definitely have an In the News section of your site. And then I think you should have a Press Kits section as well that are kind of the more traditional, you know, here's the fast facts about our organization, here's our executive bios, Here's maybe a product sheet for our product or our brand, things like that. Um, I also think that an online newsroom should include multimedia, should include lots of things like videos with the CEO, um, pictures, logos, any kind of multimedia items that you can share. And with social media, I would recommend utilizing and plugging in those channels. You know, you've got a YouTube channel where you can share video, mm -hmm. although that's not usually broadcast quality video, so okay. you might want to address having a on your newsroom, a resource for broadcast quality video. You've got pictures, both high res and low res, you know, for the web and for print. Um, logos, same thing. Um, so multimedia is another important section of a newsroom. And these are all sections, I mean, you ask small business versus large business. These are all elements that even I include as a small business. And I think that's important. Um, probably a company overview, which may be included in the press kit section, mm -hmm. but I do have a, a an area of my newsroom just that is a company overview that explains you know short bullet point information um, who I am what I do and you mentioned a social media press release and maybe you want to talk about that in a minute but I think that we're seeing a trend from the paper traditional news release to this digital release um, and people called it a long time the social media news release but now the trend is a social media newsroom that it's actually a website that incorporates all those social media channels and tools and helps a company tell its tell its own story. Okay, so how, Pete? How do we add a newsroom to our <laughs> website? There's there's a couple strategies. Okay. Um, my feeling is search optimization is most important for things you publish and share online. So you should have a main website. So let's say it's Nike.com, okay, and that should be a portal into all that you have. Your newsroom should be placed in a subdomain of that primary domain or its own separate domain. So the way I would recommend doing it is news.nike.com or nikenews.com. A lot of organizations will do like nike.com forward slash news, 
And what that does is it puts your newsroom in a, a folder, okay, a subdirectory of your primary site. For search purposes, that is not another website that will show up in Google search results. But if you put it as a subdomain or its own separate domain, suddenly you've got Nike.com and news.nike.com that can both show up and get search placement for you. And I, I really believe that's important for organizations. And I, I like to break out microsites like that for a newsroom, for a blog, you know, for Facebook and YouTube and all those things. And that helps you kind of claim those top 10 search results for your product or brand. Okay. So um, if someone, um, I, I did look, um, I believe, on your website and you listed, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, hosted online newsroom providers. And um, yeah. the prices, it seemed to me, like might be a little out of the budget for some really small businesses. So if someone doesn't have a hundred or two hundred dollars a month for a newsroom, what should what should they do? Should they just try to embed their own videos? Should they like what you know, for someone just starting out who wants to seem like I'm a legit company, take me seriously. So the do it your the do it yourself approach is WordPress. Okay. It's customize an installation of WordPress just for your newsroom and utilize those uh, domain strategies I told you, you know, put it as a subdomain or buy a whole new domain. You can make it look and feel like your main site exactly, or you can make it a little different. I don't have a problem with uh, especially smaller organizations that have kind of a different look and feel as long as there's a, a theme, you know, brand and brand colors and all those things that tie it together. But I think it's okay to have like a blog and a newsroom and a main website that complement each other but aren't exact, you know, replicas of, of each other. Okay. So then um, those five, you had News Cactus, your own, uh, Business Wire, iPress Room, Media Room, Tech Group, Vocus. Tell us what that kind of service would actually do for us SEO-wise, SEM-wise. Um, what do we get for that $199 a month? Or even if you want to just focus on yours, News Cactus, just tell us, help us right, understand so, how that's a wise investment. So, so News Cactus is the, the lowest priced solution. It's $199. Some of the others... Go, go upwards last I priced of close to twelve thirteen fourteen hundred dollars a month so kind of more expensive but in that in that vein you know you do get what you pay for there are more bells and whistles news cactus is a more of kind of quick and easy and do it yourself type of thing there's some tools that we use that the person has to set up on their end um, so um, while it does provide all that's necessary it doesn't have some of the bells and whistles that some of the others like if you were to use a, a business wire or vocus newsroom when you publish a, a news release there in your site it can also go out through newswire distribution you know through their distribution channels um, whereas some of the others the distribution is simply syndicated through RSS feeds so people have to subscribe to it um, I guess ask me your question again about what I guess what you I, did versus I just want you to sort of tell people why investing $199 a month or up is actually going to do more for their business but then them trying to like struggle through and perhaps do it themselves. I know a lot of small businesses try to do everything themselves and if you can make the case for why even I should be using an online newsroom for which I'm paying, even News Cactus, help me to understand why that's a wise investment. So I like to explain it this way. Um, you know, those people who are homeowners, uh, do you do everything in your home yourself? Okay, are you, are you a handyman? Do you do all the fix, fixer-upper stuff? Do you mow your lawn? Do you shovel the snow? Do you do the remodeling yourself? Or do you hire people to do it? You know what and, they're doing. And, yeah. yeah, and for a small business owner, it really is the same thing. I mean, can you be a jack-of-all-trades or do you focus and specialize in how you make money and then bring in experts to help you do other things? So that's really the case for any, I think, software as a service is that it's plug-and-play, it's turnkey, it's quick, it's easy, um, and it's based on best practices. You would hope that all these software as a service providers, News Cactus included, are based on things that journalists want to see. They provide all the tools that are there. It's easy for someone to use. Um, start to finish, you know, from, from News Cactus's perspective, you could be up and running within a week, you know, within a few days, really, of saying, I want a newsroom, and then we install the software, give you your username and password, you start plugging in content, we customize the look and feel of it to match your main website, and you're up and running. Um, if you were to do this on your own, you know, taking WordPress, installing it on a domain, customizing it, you know, you might be a week or two or three, or uh, it just depends on how familiar you are with the tools on how quick you can be up and running. So I think the argument for using a service, 
you know, software that's ready to go is just that it's based on best practices, it includes all the right elements, it's ready to go, it's just a matter of paying for it, getting it set up. And that timeline is probably a few days or, or weeks versus maybe months if you do it on your own. And they know the best practices for SEO then. That will actually get me more traffic a lot faster than me struggling through get it. Because I think that's the problem with small businesses and sites is getting those links and getting people to actually traffic your website. So if you do decide to do it on your own, how do, would you promote your newsroom? That, that's great. So links are important. Inbound links are important. If you follow the strategy I recommend and have a main website and a subdomain for a newsroom and maybe a blog and some other social media sites, you are linking to yourself. So right away you're benefiting yourself with this inbound linking, right? Help, helping your SEO. Um, you promote every platform on all the other platforms. So for instance on my Facebook page I have a whole long list of URLs that point to all my different companies, all my different websites, online properties. On my home page I have a long list of here's where you follow me and you include things like you know your little Twitter stream and your your Facebook like button and all those things that you can do to kind of interlink and promote your own sites on your own platforms. And then you can use social media very effectively, I think especially Twitter and Facebook um, and YouTube, to talk about what you're doing, to, to tell your story, and then to link in, oh, check out this blog that I wrote on this topic, or check out this news release that we you know, talk about this product or brand or whatever. So you, you, you link amongst yourselves, all your sites yourself, and then you also ask your social network. You know, even we haven't talked a lot about LinkedIn, but, but LinkedIn groups and discussions and all those things are great places to share links and content to all your different platforms. Okay, so tell us briefly, uh, because I personally don't like press releases. It seems like companies are just sending out stuff just to hopefully, they're just throwing a lot of crap out there hoping to get noticed. What are your tips then for making sure that the content that someone actually sees on your newsroom is worth reading and is, is actually newsworthy? I think the very most important skill for a good public relations person is the ability to write and to write effectively for the web and it's different. What I learned in college is, is different from how I write today. I write a press release so that the person searching for that information can find it. Like in the title I'll put key phrases and keywords that I think they'll look for. Um, and you've got to write for I want it now quick and easy type of, type of an audience. When's the last time you looked at a website and read a thousand word article? I mean you just don't do it. You look at headlines, you look at bullet points, you look at pictures and captions. So actually a news release now needs to be quick and easy. Um, a social media release will usually include fast facts right at the top, three or four items and then ways that you can interact with the company in, in social media. So you've got to write a news release, I think, from the perspective of you're a content cur curator. You are someone who is sharing content and publishing a story with the world that they'll find interesting. And it's not the dry, boring you know, product announcement, but it's maybe how it made an impact in someone's life. Or You've got to tell a human story, I think, okay. to be most effective. So a news release in some ways you might think is more like a blog or more like a feature article but you know you can't make it too fluffy it's got to be newsworthy as well so there is a fine line and and writing is a is a tremendous um, I think skill to have in these these days and do you have a suggestion for um, either a book or a website that would actually help people to become better at creating press releases or news releases so the book that I've read lately that I, that I like the most, it's been a couple of years, but it was updated a year ago, um, is The New Rules of Marketing and PR. Just because I think David Meerman Scott makes a strong case for tossing out the traditional kind of tools, especially that PR people use, and focusing on the internet and these, and these channels that you can use now to publish and share information. And he talks about gobbledygook yeah. and press releases and just how useless it is. Um, I mean, you can read sometimes a whole press release and not understand what it's about. <laughs> so I'm always like, especially my technical clients that, that do kind of IT type stuff, I'm always trying to, you know, I don't want to say dummy down, but I'm always trying to make their content and their story more accessible. Um, and, and it's a struggle because one in particular has a fairly long boilerplate that I said, I think it should be these three sentences and you're done. You know, so 
it's important, I think, to make things accessible and understandable to, to the average person um, and to tell your story in terms of how others can relate to it. I think that's the most important. Okay. Um, I know we need to close this up. So what are your three, before you give us an assignment, what are your three takeaways? What do you want, the three points you want us to remember most about online newsrooms? I, I think first is it's the most underutilized tool in the public relations business. I really believe people don't get the concept of a microsite, a whole website devoted just to sharing your your news. And it's not about a single news release. It's about lots of releases that come together to tell a story along with social media interaction that includes Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and all those other things. Um, so, so I think one is is realizing that it's a tool that's available now because of these new social media tools um, and because of the way people are using and moving to the internet. Um, it's a tool that helps you tell your message um, like you could never do it before. It gives you a great a great pulpit from which to preach basically and tell your story. I think the second thing is um, and maybe perhaps supports that is search optimization. I think it's very important to look at Google and Bing and Yahoo and look look at all the search engines and know what your keywords are. Okay, use Google AdWords or whatever and put in a few keywords you think people are searching for and see what it returns to you and then base your content creation on those keywords. I already mentioned press release titles and same goes for blogs and same goes for website content. So pay attention to search placement for your people, your products, your brands, your services, your company name, all those things. Know what your keywords are. When, when I speak with people, it's amazing to me, I ask who has a written set of keywords, 20 to 40 keywords that guide your online publishing? Less than 5% of mm. people do. So I think that's very important that you understand your keywords because that will guide how you create um, these things. And, and perhaps the third thing for online newsrooms um, is probably developing community, like so social networking, I'll say, because without being connected to people in Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, um, and I'm talking you know, PR people to journalists mm -hmm. and to colleagues and, and, and everyone, without that connection these days, there's so much media out there, we're being pulled in so many different directions, it's really hard to claim any kind of mind share. It's really hard to get your message out there. So I think you need to be well connected. You need to have lots of connections on Facebook and LinkedIn so that you can share these things. It's great if you're publishing all this great content on lots of different channels, right. but honestly, if it doesn't get out there, right, if it's not accepted and even make it into traditional media, in a lot of ways it doesn't benefit you. So, so I'd say those, those are the three most important things. Okay, and how did you build your journalist community? I use, um, right now I'm using Vocus as a tool for my clients. So I will go in and it's a worldwide database and I can pull like trade magazines or, or whatever kind of category of journalists that I want for a specific um, topic. And then I'll, I'll begin to reach out to them. I'll see what they write about, you know, I'll see if they blog, I'll see if they do video things, I'll see if they're on Twitter and I'll follow them, those types of things. So I, I do subscribe to a database where I can have access to journalist information. And then, you know, I occasionally send, send them messages and things like that. The, the idea of mass broadcasting news releases really um, is dead. It just doesn't work. So you've got to publish the content yourself online and then develop relationships with key people. And we're not talking a hundred, we're talking dozens, right? Key people who can help you get that message out um, through, through traditional media. I think that's the new media relations. So you've got to have probably some kind of tool that allows you to collect that information or you, you're smart about it and you use Twello, for instance, to go look for people on Twitter you know, who are writing for a specific publication and then you build those relationships. It's still, even though we have all this technology, it really is still about relationships. It's about telling stories and building strong relationships that help basically spread the word. Okay. Great. I knew you would have a fabulous interview with me. Thank you so much. So now is the scary part, Pete. Okay. Give us an assignment that we have to complete in at least a week or maybe 10 days. Hopefully, I'm trying to get people to do these assignments by the time the next interview comes out. So make it easy, but make it something that will actually push our business forward if we actually do it. So I, I don't know what the other assignments are, but, but 
this is what I would say should be kind of the benchmark and the baseline, and that is you do an online search audit for your products or keywords. Go to Google, Bing and Yahoo, and so for myself, I would search for um, Pete Codella or Codella Marketing or News Cactus, and I would see how I place in only the first page, the top 10. So we're only talking, you know, 10 search results per search engine, and then give yourself a score. You know, do I get 8 out of 10? Do I get 1 out of 10? Whatever it is. That will help communicators understand what they need to do and what they need to share online to basically claim more of that search result um, on, on each of the, the pages. So do an online search audit, see how you place in Google search and the other search engines, and then make a plan for creating new content to claim more of those search results. Okay. Okay. I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> So, Pete, if um, someone watching this is like, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about, I just want him to handle my newsroom, or I want him to do my PR, how can people reach you? Um, probably the easiest way is through PeteCodella.com. There's an online contact form and a phone number. Um, you can reach me in lots of, lots of different ways, LinkedIn, Facebook, Skype, email, contact form on my website. Um, but they could check out CodellaMarketing.com, PeteCodella.com, or NewsCactus.com. And also, I'd encourage them to check out the online PR podcast.com. And about each week, I'll record a new episode um, with my web partner, Code Green in Salt Lake City. And we talk about how we can use these digital tools to share key messages. So it's really all about this conversation that you and I have had. Okay. And for anyone watching, I will put all of those links in the notes. And I will right. also link to all of those newsroom providers that Pete actually suggests on his own um, website. Um, so he doesn't just tell you to go to News Cactus, he, he definitely gives you all the options that are out there and, and offers them. Um, and if Pete's endorsing them, I know they're a good deal. So Pete, thank you so much. I know you're really busy and I really appreciate your time today. You're welcome. Thank you, Sherry. All right. See ya. See you later.